Hi everyone, a bit unconventional, but I just want to make this quick video to let you know that version 9 of the Biogen add-on has released. I really wanted to make a crash course video that went over absolutely everything, but as you can tell, I'm not in my usual place at the moment, so I didn't really have time to do it. But I think what I'm going to do is just run you through the major features and make some notes about some things to look out for, because obviously since Geometry Nodes is a new feature to Blender, there are some considerations you need to keep in mind, and a couple of issues you might bump into when using the add-on. I'm quite happy with the progress so far, and it looks like a lot of you have been having fun with it, but while I'm here I'm going to try and work on some extra features and some documentation because none of that's available yet. We've also had some nice community contributions so far, especially one from Slink, which is a new Moss feature, which has been added to the official package. So that's included with the free version. It's a really fun one to play around with. You can get all kinds of interesting looking Moss effects. Hey, by the way. And since releasing it on the, what was it, the 10th of December or something like that, I've also fixed a couple of bugs and one of them, well, not really a bug, but more of like a quality of life change, made it so that Biogen automatically detects the weight input on geometry nodes if you're making your own content pack. So yeah, I'm going to go get back to work and relaxing, I guess. And I'm going to leave you with a pre-recorded audio cut who's going to run you through the features. But I will say that while I'm here and doing work remotely, obviously the production quality is going to be a bit reduced on content. So I hope you're enjoying your holidays if you celebrate it this time of year and I'll see you soon. So first of all, to get your hands on Biogen, you're going to need to go to curtisholt.online forward slash Biogen. That can be all one word or with a dash in between, it doesn't matter. And then on there you'll find a few links to the different places you can get hold of it. So that's Gumroad, GitHub and Blender Market. I highly recommend reading through the webpage because there's some important information on there, especially in regards to the new features available, some important issues that I think might catch people out, as well as a bit of information for what I want to do with it in the future. And you'll also find a note on there about the Biogen hashtag for social media in case you want to share any of your work. So if you've installed any add-ons for Blender in the past, the process is exactly the same. You can do it either manually or automatically using the install button in the user preferences in Blender, which I do recommend doing for this because it's the simplest way to get the add-on installed. One thing to keep in mind though is that I always recommend restarting Blender after removing a previous version of an add-on. This is because the classes of the add-on are still typically registered with the open instance of Blender, so most errors that happen when installing new versions of add-ons usually happen because Blender has not been restarted. There are shortcuts to force this deregistration and reload the add-ons, but just restarting Blender is the most foolproof way to do it. So once the add-on has been installed, if you're in the 3D view, by pressing N you can open up the side panel, and then you'll see the Buy Gen tab. On there you'll have the list of all the panels available for the add-on. So at the top is one of the new ones, which is the surface effects. These will allow you to paint different kinds of effects over the surface of an object. It's quite self-explanatory. Now you do this for a few different reasons. This would be if you wanted to scatter something around the surface, or alternatively if you wanted to make it look like a surface was comprised of a complex mesh, which in the case of these effects would typically be made up of a collection of smaller mesh pieces which are imported into collections. So for example you can click on any one of these presets in the drop down, then press apply to select it, of course make sure you have an object selected, and then you will see the effect appear. If you take a look in the outliner you'll see that a collection has been imported which has all of these small finer pieces which comprise that preset. Now of course because this collection is linked to the geometry nodes tree that was imported when you press that button, it means that anything you put inside of this collection from now on will become part of that effect. So yeah, what that essentially means is these presets you're importing can act as starting points if you want to adapt them or make your own effects. So that's another one of the principles of Biogen V9 I want to get across, is it's not just an add-on and a tool, it's also a template and starting point to help you with your own workflows. So a case in point about this is the fact that Biogen has now moved to a content pack system rather than having the whole thing hard coded. And what I mean by that is when you look at these different effects sections, you'll see a drop down where you can choose the different content pack. Official is the name of the one that comes with the add-on, and these content packs exist as .blend files. You can find these inside of the add-on package. And because they're blend files, it means that yes, of course, you can just open them and modify all of the template content for the add-on. This means that you can also make your own, insert your own models, do whatever you want with it. Another really nice thing about this is that it means that if I wanted to do updates to the add-on in the future, if those updates are content related, the code does not have to be touched at all. This means that theoretically only the content pack needs to be updated for people. Now if you wanted to make your own content packs, you can open up that file and then there's a text object in there which should have enough information to help you start making your own packs. Of course there are some good practices and things to keep in mind to make things presentable and work properly, but I should try and make some more content to help people with that over time. So going back to the add-on, if we take a look at the surface effects again you'll notice that there's a second button which says apply with weight paint. This is a really important feature for the surface effects because it means that you can actually paint the selected effect onto the object rather than have it apply to the entire surface. 
Now this weight painting is vertex based, which means that the more geometry your mesh has, the finer the control is for where you can place the effect over the surface. So if you press that button with an object selected, you can just start painting on. So theoretically, if I wanted to add barnacles or moss or any kind of weird geometric effect, like this kind of tangling I've got here, then you can just paint it right over the surface. Now it would quite rarely be the case that when you apply an effect like this to an object, that it will have the perfect parameters already set up. You know, it's common sense that everyone's going to have a different kind of scale for their scenes, so you're probably going to need to adjust some of the parameters. And because Biogen version 9 has integration with geometry nodes, like I alluded to earlier, when you import these presets, they import a geometry nodes tree and attach it to the object. So if you open the geometry nodes editor, you can see this entire effect laid out. Inside of here, different nodes which comprise the effect have been organized and framed in a way which will make it easier for you to understand. So say you wanted to adjust the scaling, then you would find the random scale section and adjust the values there. There should be a minimum and a maximum. Now please keep in mind that these node trees for these presets are very likely to change over time. When developing tools and systems, especially modular ones, when it comes to releasing the first version, for me it's all about making sure that we lay the groundwork so things can be improved on in the future. This means what you're seeing is not a tool which expresses maximum functionality, but is instead a tool which has been designed for maximum potential. So like I said, you can adjust these notes however you like to expand upon it. If you have any suggestions for things that you would like me to add to those template notes, then I can do that as well. The extensibility of a content pack system means everything is subject to change and improvement at a rapid pace. If people want to make their own hyper complex node groups with extreme amounts of functionality but still use the Biogen preset interface and they can do that perfectly fine for the use of the content pack system. So if you have a look around the nodes there'll be some other important values there. One of them in particular would be the density value on the distribute points on faces. This should be quite self-explanatory, it's a very important node and it pops up in most geometry nodes tutorials. This basically just increases the number of times that the mesh content is going to be distributed on the surface of the object. Now surface effects are quite similar to volume effects, which is another new category for the add-on. If you scroll down through the interface panels, you'll find the volume effects section. Now, like I said, functionally, these are very similar to the surface effects. So what's the difference? Well, the key difference is the context of the presets. You see, in my mind when making this add-on, I'm thinking about, well, when I'm going to make artwork in the future, I want to have generative control over different areas of the mesh. Things above the surface, the surface itself, which would be parametric modeling, which we'll talk about in a bit, and stuff underneath the surface, which I would call the volume effects. So mesh volume effects rather than volume in terms of atmospherics. If you have an object selected and you import some of the volume effects presets, you'll notice something. The content imported is scattered around, much like the surface effects, but it's offset it along the normal of the faces. So the content should move inside of where the original object surface was. This behavior is reflected in the node tree that's imported, and the key value here would be the normal offset, which you do also have control over with the surface effects. But like I said, those presets have been designed to be above the surface. So for example, with the example of the barnacles, it would not really make sense to offset the barnacles inside the surface because they have a very obvious direction to them, where the base of the barnacles cuts off into nothing. Now from a programmatical perspective, because these two share very similar functionality, I think to many developers it wouldn't make sense having them separate. But like I said, because I've designed this from the artistic perspective, imagining how I'm going to use it myself in the future, I wanted to keep these different because I think context is important for user experience. Now one new category of content which is different is the mesh displacement. Now mesh displacement is nothing new to Blender, but there have been many times when I've been making artwork when I think, ah, oh, well, I just want to displace a surface, but I can't be bothered to make a kind of procedural result and I can't be bothered to make a special texture for it and then put that into the displacement modifier and it's just, oh, you know, a bit of a mess. So what I've done here is try to reduce the stress involved in making mesh displacement surfaces by adding a preset menu, as well as including a blend file in the add-on package, which helps users to create their own displacement maps or height maps or bump maps or whatever you want to call them. Now at the time of release, there's only a few presets in there, so really not that much to start with, but then again, initial releases are all about laying the groundwork for future potential. So if you have an object selected and it has a high density of geometry, which could also include having a subdivision surface modifier in the object with a high level value, then when you apply this effect, you'll see it represented on the surface of the object. Again, this is geometry nodes controlled, so if you have the geometry nodes editor open, you'll be able to see the different values in there. An important note to make about mesh displacement is that there are different types of mapping available so depending on the type of displacement effect you want to create, you might want to use different types of mapping. Depending on the preset that's available, I've tried to choose the most appropriate one for it by default. 
So you can see in here that there's the triplanar mapping, which would be the equivalent of box mapping, which is where the effect is essentially projected from every essential side. And then there's the scatter map mapping, which is basically just a randomized projection. So if you had a more organic type effect for the surface displacement, then that's the one you'd want to use. So again, as a hypothetical, the triplanar would be for stuff like, you know, brick effects, where a very definitive repeating pattern needs to occur. And stuff like the scatter map would be for maybe a stone effect, or maybe food or something that does not have a very definitive repeating pattern. Now to access the depth map tool, as I'm calling it, there's a convenience button I've added in which opens the folder it's contained in. If you go inside of that file, it might be a bit confusing to start with, but this is going to help you make displacement maps. There's a default plane in the middle of the scene which should have the depth map material applied. There's a camera looking down onto that plane, and hidden by default is a clipping plane. So just to explain this, the process you'll go through to make your own displacement maps is like this. If you create an object, Put it in the middle of your scene, where the camera can look down on it. Everything above the base plane and below the clipping plane is going to be turned into displacement information. So if we take a sphere and scale it down and give it the depth map material, or whatever I have the material called, I can't actually remember exactly what it's called, but I'm sure I'm showing it on the screen here. Basically, spoiler, I'm not actually looking at the screen at the moment, I'm just closing my eyes and talking into thin air. So you have an object and you'll see that it's coloured from black to white depending on how far it is from that ground plane. When you look through the camera, of course by pressing 0 on the numpad it will automatically put you into the camera view for the active camera, then what you're basically seeing here is a representation of what the displacement map is going to look like. If we enable the clipping plane that's hidden away, anything that's protruding through this plane will not necessarily be regarded on the texture, so it might be too high for the 1.0 white value, if you want to put it that way. These values can be adjusted specifically in the shader editor by modifying the depth map material. Now one of the things I want you to have a look at if you want to learn more about how this tool works is this tutorial by CG Matter, who goes through the correct settings and outputs for exporting displacement maps. Once you've finished designing your displacement map, you're going to render an image from the camera and then save it. I have the appropriate output settings selected by default, so you don't need to worry too much about that. And then if you're making a content pack and wanted to add these mesh displacement effects, what you're going to do is duplicate one of the pre-existing mesh displacement effect node trees, or make a new one. Take the appropriate mapping node, maybe it's a triplanar or scatter map, and then plug in an image texture to that, and then you're going to import your exported displacement map, and then pack it into your content pack blend file, so there's no external dependencies. For making the content packs, there are other policies that need to be followed. So specifically, the folder name for the content pack needs to be the same as the blend file name. Bygen looks for very specific folders to look for thumbnails for the different effects. That is how Bygen knows the effect exists from the thumbnails. Now the thumbnail names need to be exactly the same as the collection names and the geometry nodes tree names. So for example, if we took a look at this tangle effect for the surface effects, the thumbnail is called tangle, the collection which contains the mesh content for the geonodes effect is also called tangle and then the geometry nodes tree is called tangle so these are all connected so Bygen knows that these are all directly related to each other but how does Biogen know where to plug in the vertex group data? Well, it looks for an input on the geometry nodes tree called weight. So it can be weight or lowercase, weight with a capital W or all uppercase. It doesn't really matter just so long as the word is weight. Now this was a patch I added because in the initial version of Biogen version 9 that was released on the 10th of December, it was done so the code would look for input free. Now the Python interaction with geometry nodes inputs is a bit weird because every time you make a new input parameter, it assigns it a number. And even if you delete that parameter and then make a new one, that old number is not reused. So it was important for me to make sure that I replaced that original system, which looked for a specific number with one which actually just read through the inputs and then found the right identifier for one with the name of weight. So that makes it a lot easier. You can have the weight input wherever you want in the stack now. So in the future, I'm going to start making content packs for the Biogen add-on. In doing so, I expect that the official content that comes pre-packaged with the add-on will also improve over time with more content and more versatility, functionality, etc. So what I'm building with this tool is a basic platform. That's something I really want to emphasize here in this video. This is not a hard-coded tool. Well, the old features are, but the new features are not. And all of the content, all of the presets you see, all of the geometry nodes trees are subject to change and improvement. The core effort in Bygen version 9 has been put into an extensible content pack system and artistic categories based on how I want to make artwork. 
Now I need to make a quick note about the modifier styles, which were the real flagship features of previous versions. So this is where the parametric modeling comes in, choosing an object and then selecting a style and having it modify what the mesh content looks like. This is something that's been really popular with the add-on, but it's going to be subject to change because I would like to change these modifier stack presets with geometry nodes alternatives. In the long run, this should give us more flexibility with more parameters and more ways to mix up the effects to get cooler results. This is going to take time because more nodes are being added to Blender with each version. And as more nodes are added, it's going to make it easier to completely recreate all of these features. So with the initial release of Bygen version 9, parametric modeling as a category is staying the same as it always was with the traditional modifier stack presets. But I just wanted to keep in mind that this is likely to change over time. Another thing that's likely to come along is the structural presets, which is for those use cases with geometry nodes where you don't originally have a mesh object, but you still want to create parametric content. And an example of this would be making wires from nothing, like bundles of wires, tree roots laid out along the ground and all stuff like that. On the initial web page, I've shown some demonstrations of some initial tests, in this case for wire effects, but there's lots of other stuff in mind. Now, another thing I want to emphasize is that I want this tool to belong to you as much as it does to me. Of course, I'm the main developer of the add-on, but like I said, with this content pack system, it's versatile. Just You can take the tool and adapt it to your own workflows. If you want to save your own geometry nodes presets, you can do that. Of course, I'm fully expecting that the asset browser is going to overlap with some of this functionality, especially in regards to the geometry nodes presets. But like I said, I've laid this add-on out in a way that resonates with my way of thinking about making artwork. Visualizing a mesh, visualizing the different layers of how we can interact with it, and then separating these into categories. So if you do want to make content for the add-on, there's the possibility of making content packs, which you can share with your friends and maybe even sell. I'm not going to take any royalties if you do that. So if you make something cool and the demand is there, you are perfectly free to go and make some money with the add-on. If you do want to do that, feel free to let me know. And I can't give any guarantees, but maybe we can collaborate on something. So overall, I'm happy to bring this add-on up to speed. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done on it. And of course, if you follow my other projects, you will know this is definitely not the only thing I'm working on. This is just one of my many side projects, which all run alongside the YouTube channel. So in the future, I would like to also show some uh, tutorial demonstrations showing how you can make some pretty cool stuff with the add-on, things that I'm pretty sure people don't actually realize they can do with it yet. So I think that'd be a very cool thing to do. I've just got to balance the time investment of making that content with all the other projects as well, including the responsibility of keeping the YouTube channel moving. So I hope you find interesting feel free to download the add-on and play with it make sure to let me know if you make anything cool remember to use the uh, hashtag buygen if you want to share anything on social media so i can keep track of it and have a look you can sign up to my patreon if you want to help support my work maybe even join our discord server to take part in discussions get help or maybe take part in our occasional art challenges you can also follow me on social media for updates i tend to put things in there more frequently than other platforms and of course subscribe to the channel and also maybe if you like the add-on consider leaving a donation this stuff takes a lot of time and effort to make and it's really appreciated. So yeah, thanks for watching, have a great day, and I will see you next time.